Hello and welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot and today I am going to be talking about my May favourites for 2021. So we started off the month of May um, with the reopening of shops in Belfast. I'm here in Northern Ireland and we have had a very long lockdown period through the winter with a lot of things closed and the shops just sort of started to reopen there at the end of April into the start of May. So of course I took myself to our local magic shop and um, you know sort of spiritual shop and had a wee look around and decided to buy myself something to support the shop because they'd reopened and what I got myself was the Wheel of the Year Tarot. Now, this is a mass market deck that I hadn't particularly had my eye on. It wasn't really on my wish list. I just wanted to get something from what they had available in store. And the box um, is, I've forgotten to pull the box out for you, um, but that's the image on the cover of the box. So it's a little um, low scarabeo deck, I believe. And the cardstock is quite slim and you know thin and flimsy, but... One thing I have discovered about this deck is that it riffle shuffles like a dream. I am not much of a riffle shuffler. Um, what do you see? I'll not, I'll not do a good job of it now because I'm doing it on camera. Yep. <laughs> oh dear. Let me try again. Otherwise, we'll have to restart and film this again. Yes. Ah, nearly. Um, I... This is the only deck um, that I have that I've been able to ruffle shuffle with relative ease, usually, <laughs> not just now. Anyway, um, so this is a deck that is based on the Wheel of the Year and I just picked it up to get something that day in the shop and it was the 1st of May, it was um, May Day and I felt, I think maybe the image on the cover of the box had a kind of a summery vibe and it just, uh, that's kind of what made me pick it. And initially, I really wasn't sure I was going to like it because it does have a comic booky kind of vibe and there's a certain amount of kind of cartoonish nudity in it. And I wasn't super keen on that, but um, it has really grown on me and it turns out to be a really, really easy deck for me to read with. So I ended up using the de this deck quite a lot this month. Um, on my Instagram, I've been doing a kind of a, you know, a daily reading for whoever needs it kind of thing. And I found the first week that I had this deck, I was pulling three cards, um, three cards from the Wheel of the Year Tarot and then making like a kind of a, a short sentence type reading from the cards. And I found they just combined really nicely to make a really straightforward reading. And then later in the month, I combined it with other oracle decks um, this is one of the cards that made me a bit hesitant about this deck temperance was a fairy i'm not so keen on fairies <laughs> um but um later in the month i combined it for those sort of daily readings with the sacred creators oracle um, this is the mass market one by us games so um, I was using that to do a three card reading with the Wheel of the Year Tarot and that worked out pretty well. I mean, aesthetically, it was really nice because they're the same size. But again, in terms of combining the decks for readings, it was really nice and straightforward to use them together. So, um, so that was... That was um, a really nice experience to work with them. Like, for example, here, I mean, this is just ra cards I've randomly drawn just now. We have Befriend the Word Polarize with the Six of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords. So we're thinking a new idea maybe about helping others, but that's going to be quite polarizing. It won't be popular with everybody, but maybe to come up with an idea that's really going to be helpful, you need to think outside the box and do something totally new and different. You know, so the combination of those decks worked well, I felt, for those little daily readings. And I also combined the Wheel of the Year Tarot for those short daily Instagram readings with the Personal Power Deck by Deja Druitt. Um, so just to give you an example of how they worked together. Um, so there we have 
So we've got the King of Pentacles, I am happy, and the Eight of Swords. That's an interesting combination. Um, or the Queen of Swords. I have permission and the Six of Wands together. Now, one of the things I really like in this Wheel of the Year tarot is the way the seasons are depicted so very clearly in each of the suits. Now, I will film a separate review of this deck um, to show it a little bit better, but um, it was nice because it was May Day that I purchased this deck, that we had this sort of crowning of the May Queen on the Six of Wands. I thought that was nice um, and helped me to connect with it, I think, when I got it first. But if you look at, for example, let me see. So there's Pentacles is Autumn. And we can see swords um, is more of a winter vibe. So each of the four suits has a particular season that they're attached to. And then the Major Arcana do not. But that's the the world card. And that's the one that's on the cover of the box if you're having a look out for it. Um, I believe somebody told me on Instagram that the artist for this deck is an Italian comic book artist. Um, her name is there, Maria Sorry, sorry, Maria Carati did the book and it's Ant Antonella Platano is the artist. So um, Antonella Platano apparently is an Italian comic book artist. Um, and you really get that feel from these cards and they really sort of have a storybook feel. Maybe like a sort of Northern European storybook atmosphere to them. Everybody in them is white, for example. And nearly everybody is young and um, there's a, the odd bearded man, but <laughs> that's about the height of it. Um, but for all that, you know, it's maybe it doesn't tick some of the boxes that I would normally look for in a deck. I find it a real easy deck to read with. And um, I ended up making it this special box. Um, this is a really cheap little wooden box that I picked up in, um, in a bargain bookstore. And I just felt like painting the box and as you can see I sort of did the little design on the lid um that's just colored with sharpie and then a little bit of white paint um I did the design on the box just to match the the back of the cards so that was a fun little project as well to paint that and then that's sitting out on my dresser at the minute um because I have been using this deck quite a bit so that was the first new deck that I got in May of 2021 um, another new deck was this one. So this is the Song of My Heart Oracle deck. And this is a kind of an affirmation Oracle deck. And it's by a creator who I know only as Hand Me That Pencil on Instagram. So I'll see if I can manage to link um, her shop or her, her Instagram below the video here. So this deck is... Um, a New Zealand deck. It's The artist is um, based in New Zealand, the creator, and has used New Zealand as inspiration in the creation of the deck. So you can see here on the back design we have the Southern Cross and the Turtle and the Wheel. Um, and the deck came really interestingly packaged in like a DL size envelope and sort of packaged, flat packed like this. Um, and it meant that instead of shipping it in a big, bulky, heavy box, um, she was able to ship it quite cheaply, which I thought was really, really amazing considering it was coming from literally the other side of the planet um, in New Zealand to reach me here in Northern Ireland. Um, so the deck is, again, independently published and it is uh, an affirmation deck. It features uh, women. And it also features items from or places from the New Zealand landscape on the bodies of the women. And then there's sometimes other kind of um, animal or plant items in the cards. So I ordered this really because I'd seen it again and again from following Hand Me That Pencil on Instagram. And I have had a, a really, really intensely busy time at work over the last month or so. And as it was coming to the end of the huge workload of a particular project I felt I deserved a little treat so I decided to buy this now when you look up um if you look up hand me that pencils website there are two song of my heart oracle decks there's like a part one and part two and I ordered both so this is the combined song of my heart one and two oracle deck 
and they mostly are on, apart from like that one card, on this lovely turquoisey teal background. And this card is quite representative of the way the cards are. So we have, I follow my heart as an affirmation. And then like a rainbow trout, I choose to move against the current so I can move forward. So she's taken inspiration from the rainbow trout to create this one particular card. Um, but we also have cards that feature um, landscape as well. Let me see. Yes, here's a good example. I am worthy of love. Like the order of the Sisters of Compassion on the Huanangui River, I believe in myself and my purpose. Sorry for not pronouncing that properly. Um, but so it's really rooted in New Zealand, in the New Zealand landscape, in the flora and fauna of New Zealand. And it has a lovely diversity in the representation of women. It's nearly all nude bodies, but because they're they're kind of covered in with landscape, you know, the, the blue mountains offer stability to the land. The lessons of the past guide my current decisions. I devote my time to laughter. Um, Hand Me That Pencil is currently working on an elders based tarot deck. So all the people in the cards are older and I'm really excited about that. And I think I'll be getting that when it comes out. Um, but this, I achieve my goals. It's just so lovely. So I've only been working with this a little bit so far. Um, I used it one week during May for my Instagram readings and I paired it with this deck, the Sacred Ireland Celtic Moon Oracle. Um, so it was kind of like a double oracle, a double oracle reading. So I, I had put together sort of one of the Sacred Ireland Celtic Moon cards along with two of the Song of My Heart cards and then allowed that to sort of create um, one common message through the three cards. So if you want to see how I go about doing that, um, please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Um, but I felt they paired together really nicely as, as uh, two decks, probably because the energy of both decks is very feminine. And I also thought it was kind of interesting to pair together the New Zealand deck and the Ireland deck, you know, from opposite opposite sides of our planet. Um, I have never actually been to New Zealand and I don't have any particular connection with New Zealand. I lived in Australia for a few years, um, but I never managed to get to New Zealand while I was there. So um, hopefully at some future point, um, I'll be able to travel to and visit New Zealand. And then some of these cards will probably resonate even more because I'll be saying, oh, I've, I've been there. <laughs> but um, yeah, for the minute, um, I'm mostly kind of inspired by our working with the affirmations and the, the imagery as opposed to the particularly New Zealand resonances of the cards um, so far. So, but anyway, this is a lovely deck. Um, and unfortunately, as I say, I don't know the actual name of the creator, but check out Hand Me That Pencil on Instagram and you'll be able to see there's a couple, number of other decks that um, they have created as well as this one. So this was my special treat to myself this month for getting through a lot of work. <laughs> and the other new deck that I got this month was the Sun and Moon Tarot. So this was the last of the trades that I'd completed. Um, if you watched my April favourites, you might have heard me talking about I had traded a couple of decks. And this one, I believe it was the Spellcasting Oracle that I had swapped for this tarot deck. So I thought that was a bit of a score. Um, so it comes in this little tin. And this is my very first tarot in a tin, um, which is super cute. Uh, the artwork on these cards is gorgeous and they are so tiny. Let me see. So that Song of My Heart Oracle is kind of a standard um, tarot card size. So that's the size of these little cards. They're even smaller than poker size. Um, the personal power deck that I've shown you a minute ago, it's poker size. And these tarot and a tin cards, you know, they're smaller again than that. So the, the drawback, unfortunately, is because they have these big borders. Because um, this is a deck that originally came with keywords. So you can see the person that I've bought it from has blacked out the keywords on the borders with um, like a black sharpie and um, or one I bought it from, traded it from. 
And I am perfectly happy about that. I was not in the least bit bothered about that because this is kind of a, a Thoth based deck and I don't read Thoth and I have no intention of learning to read Thoth. And I have had one deck in the past that has Thoth keywords on it and I found the, they didn't resonate with me and my understanding of what the cards meant and they kind of put me off. So I'm quite happy to have them removed from this deck. Now, I have contemplated cutting the borders off entirely, but that won't make the artwork any bigger. And I think it might make the cards a little bit too small to handle. So the problem really is just that the art, because of the borders, the artwork is shrunk so small. Now, the Sun and Moon Tarot does have a bigger, like US games um, have like a standard edition of it as well. Although I think even then it has borders, um, maybe white borders on the other version. Um, copyright on every card. But um, so if I do find that I really love working with this, I might end up buying the bigger version um, and then maybe trimming it down because the cards, the artwork is just so cute. And even though it's technically Thoth based, um, the imagery is close enough to Rider Waite Smith based imagery to be able to work with it. I love that Queen of Wands. She's so fabulous. So it's a really nice little um, nice little deck and I've just kind of started to work with it um, now this month and I've been using it this week for my daily card pulls on Instagram. So if you want to check that out, um, I've been combining it with, oh gosh, I've drawn a blank. <laughs> I can't remember what I've combined it with. Anyway, you can find out on my Instagram. So really nice little deck and um, yeah, you'll be hearing more about that once I've had a really good chance to work with it properly. So those were my three new decks in the month of May it was the Sun and Moon Tarot, the um, ha, Song of My Heart um, Oracle and the Wheel of the Year Tarot. And one other deck that I worked or other decks that I worked with this month um, was the Mysteries of Mary Tarot. So the Mysteries of Mary Tarot, you might remember, I bought a couple of months ago um, on the because of the possibility that it might be going out of print. Um, and this is one of the more expensive tarot decks that I've ever bought. Uh, it is a deck that I worked with pretty consistently throughout May. Um, I grew up Catholic and May is the month of Mary is what we always um, did when I was in primary school. So my initial plan had been to pull a card of the day from the Mysteries of Mary Tarot to read up about the card in the guidebook to the tarot deck. And that was going to be my little morning practice and I was going to journal about each card every day. And then my evening practice was going to be to read a little bit from Untie the Strong Woman by Clarissa Picola Estes. I read half of that book last May and I still have the second half of the book to read. So that was my intention to read um, that at bedtime and to say a decade of the rosary to honour Mary. And that didn't quite come together in the way I had planned. I did pull a card every day from the Mysteries of Mary Tarot. I mostly read the excerpt from the guidebook. I ran out of time and patience for daily journaling pretty quickly. And in the evenings, I was mostly far too tired to do anything at bedtime other than just fall asleep. So um, that didn't really quite work out. But I am continuing to work with the Mysteries of Mary Tarot into the month of June. And instead of using it for daily draws, I'm using it more for sort of every so often, um, every few days maybe. And I'm displaying the card um, in a different area in my house um, just for contemplation and reading the guidebook again. This I do not feel is a divinatory deck. I didn't find that the cards that I pulled were particularly um, kind of foretelling my day ahead so much, but they were quite inspiring um, from a devotional aspect, you know, considering about the sacred feminine and about Mary in particular. But what's so funny is just as I was saying that, <laughs> the card that popped up as the next card was the Servant of Roses. This card came up for me quite a lot during the month of May. If this was, if anything, like my stalker card, um, I got it so often. And every day that I pulled this card, I had quite an important conversation with my manager at work. 
who is male, who is very kind and supportive. And the, <laughs> this card sort of in the guidebook talks about, um, this is, I think, supposed to be the father of Mary. I can't remember his name now. But the card meaning is about the sort of mask, the divine masculine providing structure and safety and that sort of thing. And it really did speak to that being provided for me by my manager, but also to me needing to find that aspect of the self as well um, to deal with some challenges that were popping up at work. So that just was really interesting that when I said it wasn't divinatory and then, <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. But it's a really interesting deck. Um, if you're not familiar with it, each of these is a little physical shrine, like a little three-dimensional shrine that um, the creator, um, Hetty Ann Grobler, has made and then um, photographed for this deck. And Hetty Ann is currently shipping um, the first editions of her Mysteries of the Black Madonna tarot deck, which I haven't ordered. Um, but this, uh, this one's been out for a couple of years, but it was... Um, it's it's a really interesting deck. I think if you don't have a uh, relationship with Mary, um, then it would be, you would find it a bit weird to work with, I think. But if you come from a Catholic background or you have a relationship with with um, the Divine Mother Mary um, from uh, another tradition or outside of a tradition, but and you'd want like to sort of integrate that into your tarot or to use tarot in a more spiritual way um this is quite interesting so i'm still kind of at the beginning of the journey working with this but i was using that quite a lot during the month of may and i also for the first time pulled out my margaret peterson tarot which um i got at christmas and the way i used the margaret peterson tarot i think this is a really intuitive um and possibly sort of shadow deck for me um, it's really, really interesting. The art just, there's so many things sort of hidden in what, when I look at them first, I think there's, it's just too abstract. There's nothing I can read in that. And then when I sit down to really study, um, you know, or contemplate an image, I get quite a lot out of it. So what I was doing was using um, the Margaret Peterson Tarot to present like a challenge that I was facing at the moment or kind of like a shadow or something I'm not acknowledging or something that I need to deal with and then I was pulling a card from the Mysteries of Mary Tarot as kind of like a blessing or advice um, on how to deal with that particular shadow issue and those two decks I felt worked really well together the conversation between them was great and I am probably going to continue to use the Margaret Peterson Tarot in that way so that's all the tarot biz for this month. I am going to take you for a quick run through a few other bits and pieces, including some books I've been reading and the music I've been listening to if you want to hang around for another five minutes or so. So um, this month, as I mentioned earlier, was the has been the beginning of releasing the lockdown restrictions here in Ireland. And at the very end of the month, we had uh, finally, we were allowed to have people in our homes again. We were briefly allowed to have, um, to bubble with like one other household sort of over Christmas. But really it's been way more than six months since we've been allowed to have casual visitors in our homes. And as soon as that was lifted, one of my very good friends came over to visit and we had a few glasses of wine and we watched Hamilton on Disney Plus. She hadn't seen it before. She's a big musicals fan as well. And we had a really lovely evening um, watching Hamilton together. So that was really lovely. Um, and the performer who really stood out for me this time is the actor who was playing George Washington. Um, I mean, there's so many great performers. As you know, I was a bit obsessed with Leslie Odom Jr., who is Aaron Burr. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed the performance of George Washington, <laughs> whatever that actor's name is, this time around. Um, some of the music I've been listening to through the course of this month. Um, I mentioned this album last month as well. Declan O'Rourke um, is an Irish singer-songwriter. Very kind of guitar acoustic bass with some strings. Um, and this album is his most recent one. Not his best in my view, but it is pretty good. Lots of really nice narrative songwriting and um, storytelling, you know. So I listened to this another couple of times this month. 
Um, I also <coughs> really enjoyed pulling out this one. I haven't listened to this in ages. This is Brona Gallagher and the album is called Gather Your Greatness. So if you were around in the 90s and you remember the movie The Commitments, Brona Gallagher was one of the girls in The Commitments. And this album I picked up at one of her live gigs. She played a gig in Belfast uh, a couple of years ago um, that I went to. One of the things I really like on the CD is like she pictures the people in the band, like, you know, gives them full credit and shows photos of who they are. Um, so this album is really, really good fun to listen to. She is such, when I saw her perform live, She's such a high energy performer and her voice is amazing and she has this real sensual command of herself and of the stage and myself and the friend that we went to see together. We both really, really enjoyed her performance. The album doesn't quite do justice to how great she is live, but um, it is really enjoyable and a lot of songs are really upbeat and really good fun. So if you're not familiar with Brona Gallagher, you can check her out. I'll maybe see if I can link one of her songs below. Um, I also had a listen to this one this month, The Stripes. They I don't even know if they're still recording. Um, I picked this up a couple of years ago. The Stripes are an Irish band. And as you can see, they are really young guys. Um, and the style of their music is very reminiscent of kind of like 60s British rock, like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and that kind of um, very upbeat, very fast paced. Um, there's a couple of covers on this album, but there's also um, original songs as well. And I saw them live at a music festival um, here in Ireland a few years ago. And they were so great, like these really young guys up on stage, you know, playing their instruments and really getting the crowd going. Everybody was dancing. It was really good fun. So these are a, this is a fun band. And um, the album is is an enjoyable listen on a sunny day. So that's the stripes i've also been listening to this um so tanarawin um they are uh a band that i saw live at a festival in belfast as well um their music is it's um oh, i can't think of the right way to describe it desert music um really look really great drums and uh really lovely melodies um it's very it's kind of dancing music, like you can dance to it, but it's very relaxing at the same time because the, the drum beat's kind of like a heartbeat running through the music, you know. Um, I think it says here, yeah, where the music is recorded. Um, so recorded on the road in Western Sahara and Mauritania in 2018. And then there's some recordings in Algeria and in Paris in the studio. So um, I'll try to link one of their songs below as well, but... Tanarawin are great, really nice music um, to listen to. So I've enjoyed that. I've got quite a few spins this month. Um, what else have I been listening to? REM, Aneurysm 95. Um, I was a massive, I mean, still am a massive REM fan. Love, love, loved REM. Aneurysm 95, this is not the easiest to listen to in terms of sound quality. It's a live recording from the Monster Tour after I think the, the Monster Tour had um, in the late 90s, or well, I suppose it's 95, the Monster Tour in the 90s had, had to be cancelled midway through because of a health problem with one of the band and then it restarted again. And this, I think, is from just as the restarting of the tour. Um, so yes, I was a massive fan of R.E.M. in the 90s and well into the 2000s until they broke up. Um, so this is just kind of a trip down memory lane listening to this. Um, but the sound quality is pretty bad because of the concert. It's a live concert and... Um, the you know if you're into REM their actual albums are way better to listen to than this but it was fun to listen to and I also find myself listening again to Rising Appalachia Ley Lines this is one of my favorite new albums that I got last year really lovely um great again lovely sunny day music um and if you haven't heard of them I'll try to link one of their songs below as well because they're a really nice band if you want to check them out so that's some of the music I've been listening to. And finally, if you're still sticking around, thank you, books. So um, I read this for my book club, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This has been getting a lot of hype in the British press. And it's a nice book. It's a nice read. It sort of deals with the concept of someone 
being able to go into a library, like a magical library, where you could borrow other alternative lives. So imagining all choices that you've made in your life. And if you had have gone down that road, if you had have tried that career, if you had have stayed in that relationship, what would your life be like? Um, and it's really written with a, a mind to mental health and, you know, it leaves, makes you think about sort of the choices you've made in your life and where you are in your life and so on. And um, yeah, I find it quite, I find it quite nice. I find it quite um, uplifting to read. It's not a great book, but it, it's a good book. Um, and I also really enjoyed this, um, Pride by E.B. Zoboy. And the writer of this book um, is from New York or um well, she was born in Haiti and then grew up and lived um, in Brooklyn. And this novel is a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice, but set in Brooklyn and with um, all black characters um, in the story. So I really enjoyed this. It was good fun. It's a YA novel, young adult novel. So it was dead easy read. And um, I enjoyed what she had done with, you know, locating the Pride and Prejudice story into a modern context. And I love the atmosphere and the world building of um, the neighborhood in Brooklyn where the characters live. It was very, um, you know, very vibrant and just full of detail and the voices of the characters and so on. I really, really enjoyed that. So because um, I mean, it's not a it's not a world that I know. Um, so she really brought it to life um, for me. So if you enjoy those kind of like modern remixes of classic novels, this is one to check out. I really liked it. Um, I also finished reading at last <laughs> Fairy Wicca um, by Kisma Stepanich and I have put a full book review of this on my channel so if you want to hear what I thought about that you can check it out um, but the big takeaway from reading the book was if you've got the Fairy Wicca tarot you don't have to read this book it's not about the tarot deck at all um, but yeah for more on that there's a video on my channel um, I also listened to an audiobook. Um, I listened to the audiobook of The Pool of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. Um, Emma Donoghue wrote the novel Room, which was a big hit a number of years ago. Um, the Pool of the Stars is set in 1918 in a maternity fever ward in a hospital in Dublin. So it's right in the middle of the flu pandemic um, and in the middle of World War I in Dublin, a couple of years after the Easter Rising. And she really brings that kind of um, that world and that time to life. But it's set on a maternity ward. So the story um, of the pull of the stars is very much around the births of some of these women with the influenza. And it's very graphic. And um, I don't think I would have wanted to read it when I was pregnant because it does contain things like infant death and maternal death that was would have been very frightening to read um when I was pregnant um but I was able to read it and listen to it being read obviously as the audiobook um at the moment and it I mean Emma Donoghue is a brilliant wordsmith like the sentences the the writing is beautiful um and the story was very intense and claustrophobic um as it was set just over a few days in this maternity fever ward so if you like the sound of that story i mean and trigger warnings noted um the pull of the stars by emma donahue is probably the best book that i read if i can count an audiobook as reading in the month of may and then just to finish off um i'm still in the middle of reading this as you can see um holly mcnish is a poet um a english poet and she is, uh, I mean, I I really love her. Um, this is a brand new book um, just out in, just released in May. Um, and she wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. Some of her content is sexually explicit. She uses very frank adult language. So if that's not for you, maybe turn off now. Um, but I discovered Holly McNish because she had written a book previously called... Um, nobody told me that was about pregnancy and childbirth and being a mother to a young child and I read it when my little one was less than a year old and I found it incredibly powerful and then later I went to see Holly do a live reading um, locally here when she was on tour and I met her afterwards and spoke to her and she was just lovely um, and she signed my copy of the book and uh, we had a little chat about being a mum and so on so 
she writes a lot about motherhood. She writes a lot about friendship. She writes a lot about, I mean, well, <laughs> the review clip on the cover there might give you a clue. Um, and I thought I would just maybe finish off today by reading you one of her poems. I will, of course, also link some of her stuff below. Um, some of her poems, as I say, have quite uh, adult content. And I don't want to read one of those on my channel just now, but I'll link some of them below if you want to go and check that out. I'll link um, Embarrassed, which is a poem that she that was from the no, the Nobody Told Me book, which is about breastfeeding. It was really, really good. Um, and I'll see if I can link another one or two of her reading some of her poems from this book, Slug, and other things I've been told to hate. But the one I wanted to read for you today, um, I thought it would be appropriate for our tarot community, is called Shopping with my daughter on Glastonbury High Street. So um, let's have a wee look. So it's for Bryony e. Dick's beautiful illustrations, thank you for those. And for Shelly Ann, thank you for all the books. So here we go. There are no mermaids, darling, sorry. There are no fairies, darling, sorry. There are no pixies, darling, sorry. Not even witches, darling, sorry, here who look like you. These creatures may be mythical, but even myths in the hand of this most spiritual of artist towns have forgotten all the browns. Brushes dipping in and out of pink paint, only pink paint, only pink. Your list unticked. Let's stop. Your eyes are sunk too much already. Fuck their mermaid dolls, pixie pictures, keyring fairy, crystals to hang inside excited, dreaming children's bedrooms. Windows twisting sunshine into rainbows flex. Let's head back home. Play make believe. Pick up your wings and wands and truths and wait until the world of fantasy and fable no longer paints like Hitler Youth. So um, just a little poem <laughs> that some of us might relate to um, and, and really a, such a powerful reminder of why diversity of representation in our tarot decks and our oracle decks and our spiritual um you know, and uh, otherwise woo-woo stuff is just so important for little girls who are looking for themselves as a mermaid. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Um, I realise I haven't posted very many videos this last month, um, but I'm hoping to have a few more for us in the, in the coming months. So uh, thanks for sticking with me and I would love to hear what you think about